Welcome to a new Royal Reviewer episode. Finally, a Royal Reviewer episode. And quite, a, it's been a moment. It really has been a moment. I was trying to adjust my glasses so you don't get the glare. I did actually end up getting the anti-glare lenses, but they still have a little bit of a glare. Anyway, it has been a moment. Let me just adjust this camera because I'll explain in a moment where we are. <laughs> we are still in my dining room. We are back in my dining room, but this room is now also being used as a home office. So my dining table has been commented as an office. My partner is now working from home in the daytime um, and I can't use my little office now uh, upstairs because it's basically turned into a storeroom. In fact, before we get into the Royal Track, this video is going to be 100% about the Royal Family. It's gonna be um, about Queen Elizabeth's 96th birthday. It's gonna be about all the things that have been happening over the past couple of months. So please, actually that's better if I turn the camera down. So please get your questions ready. Um, obviously, you know, the live chat might be quite busy. So if I do miss a question, please don't be offended. Just repeat it and hopefully I'll see it. Um, I might not be able to read all of your questions or say hello to everybody, but hello to everyone who is joining. And most people will be watching on catch up. So please feel free to leave a comment in the comments box below. So before we get into Royal Chat, I just thought I'd update you um, about what I've been up to. So if you don't follow my other channel, I do have another channel. It's called um, Elliot and Matt. Matt is my partner. And over the past you know, year and a half, we have been doing, well, over the past year, we've been doing a renovation project on our home. So we've been documenting it, vlogging it. We have also been doing lots of new build show home tours. So although I haven't been very active and busy on this channel, I have been extremely busy and active in my private life and on my other channel. So do go and check that out. Once I've gone off here, I will put that link in the description box below. If you're wondering, I, it is a tiara day. And you know what? I haven't worn a tiara for a long time and I think I've missed them. Uh, this is, of course, I've chosen this one because it is one of the Queen's favourite tiaras. This is the Girls of Great Britain and Ireland tiara. I've worn it in many, 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 many previous videos over the past five years. And by the way, I have been doing Royal Reviewer. I have been on YouTube for over five years now. And that is absolutely amazing. I can't believe how quick the time has gone. So we are going to use this video as an opportunity to catch up. I have been following all of the Royal News. So please, because there's been so much that I haven't spoken about, please let me know what you want to talk about and we will talk about it as long as I catch what you've said. So hello to everyone, I can see Beth Ann, Laurie Laurie, Christine, Laura's here, Lauren's here, Nancy, Majonesop, um, Kaneta, um, NR, Ashley, Renee, um, Isold, I hope I've said your name correctly, USA, Pamela, everyone's here. So hello and welcome to everyone. I'm gonna first of all, talk about the Queen's birthday. So today, today is the actual Queen's birthday. There's obviously, um, she's well known for having two birthdays, but of course a person cannot actually have two birthdays. Um, so today is the, her actual birthday. Um, April the 21st is her real birthday. The one that happens in the summer is more of the official birthday. It's when we have Troop in the Colour. It's when we can pretty much, well, as much as we can in the UK, guarantee some kind of decent weather. It's where we have the big Trooping the Colour um, procession and the Horse Guards Parade um, and the balcony appearance, but that's not today. So today, um, usually the Queen celebrates her real birthday in private, so um, this year really is no different to any other. She normally uh, spends it in private. Over the past two years, um, of course, there have been restrictions. So the Queen has had a limited bubble of people. Um, but today, I imagine that she has had many visitors. She's actually been photographed today out in her Range Rover, I think it was. She wasn't driving, she was being chauffeur driven. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with her mobility issues, of which I think, I should, by the way, there's gonna be a lot of jumping around. So I'll, prob I'll probably go from one topic to the other. So if I do veer off, um, please try and bring me back. So mobility issues, that has been something that has been on a lot of people's minds over the past, you know, six, seven, eight months. 
Um, the Queen's mobility has changed. We have seen a shift. She is 96 years old um, and she has had remarkable health up to now, physical health. Um, and she is still as sharp as ever. We're not talking a deterioration of the mind here. We've all seen her on her Zoom calls. We've all seen that she has been still attending to all of the duties of state. In fact, actually, she is doing the key functions of state. All the other bits, all the other visiting hospitals, turning up to public engagements, all of that is actually not essential. That's all the nice frilly bits. It's all the nice bits that you like to see. Um, but actually, the main function, the main duties of a constitutional monarch are all being met. The Queen is still receiving her daily red boxes of state papers, which she reads through. Anything that have to be signed into law, she's still signing them into law. She's not having to rely on um, Charles to do that for her. So all the main functions are still being met. There is no need for a regency at the moment. All the criteria for a regency are not there. The Queen is not um, absent of mind. She's not absent of body. She's not overseas. And sh her mobility is, is still okay to be able to perform the key functions of a constitutional monarch. So there is no need for a regency. The Regency Act would actually have to be changed before a regency could come in because the Queen is still okay to perform those duties. But public engagement, long haul travel has been off the cards for Her Majesty for a while now. Um, but, you know, all the nice, all the nice bits, all the nice going places and meeting people and doing walkabouts, I think have come pretty much to an, a, quite a quick end. Um, and I do believe that it is issues with legs um, because it seems to be the walking is the tricky point. We saw during the um, Commonwealth Day service, and no, we saw during um, Prince Philip's um, memorial service, is what I'm trying to say, that actually she was walking remarkably well. Of course, she had Prince Andrew by her side. Um, and But she, I, it, I was surprised because the fuss that the press were making about wheelchairs and all the rest of it, she actually walked really well. Um, and in fact, today, a beautiful photo. In fact, I've used the photo as the thumbnail for this video because it's a gorgeous photo of the Queen and it was only taken a few months ago and she's standing between her two, well, two gorgeous fell ponies. White ponies uh, look absolutely amazing. There is, I do believe, the tree or the bush in the background is a magnolia. That's all white and the Queen is dressed in that big kind of, I don't know what it's called, is it like a big over over overcoat mac it looks amazing and of course she was gripping onto the reins and i think that the two fell ponies were actually steadying her so i'm imagining that she now walks around uh, probably with a stick or, or a cane which actually is prince phillips it's prince phillips cane which is why it looks so high and it hasn't been altered in fact i really don't know why the queen <laughs> has not had this uh, cane shortened in length to actually so she can use it although i think she's using it more like a hiking cane you know how you would normally grip a hiking cane and it would a bit like a shepherd's crook how it would be a little bit higher so i think she's gripping on and using it a bit like a crook rather than a walking stick because it would be up there um so she has you so she is using prince philip's uh, stick and in a way that's kind of a nice bit of personal symbolism because even after Prince Philip has gone, she's using him as her strength and stay. Remember when she said she called him her strength and stay. And even today, she's using him. She's using something of his uh, to steady her and to be her strength. So oh, I'm getting emotional. That's choking me up, that thought. Isn't it lovely? Um, but yeah, so um, when you think about it, you know, she's, she's still... Um, Prince Philip is still there. He's still um, helping her through. Okay. Um, oh, and like I said, the Queen was seen in her Range Rover today. I think that was probably a little bit staged, perhaps. I think people wanted to, I think the, the palace probably wanted her to be seen on her birthday, but not in, uh, well, just so that people know that she's okay, really. Um, so I think they probably drove her on the more public roads in Windsor, 
just so people could see that she was okay. So I do think that probably, in all fairness, was probably set up a little bit. Um, but, um, but yeah, so there we go. Um, thank you, Nancy, who says, love the tiara. Uh, Lauren, it's the Girls of Great Britain, Britain and Ireland tiara. Lots of people saying happy 96th birthday to Her Majesty. Ashley Clare says, I've missed you. Thank you so much. I've missed you all too. I have been so busy, really, honestly, renovating a house for uh, uh, Matt and, um, myself and Matt have documented on, on YouTube, on our other channel, the complete renovation and restoration of a 1946 property. It needed so much work. It has taken up all of my time, literally. Um, and it has been stressful. It has had ups. It has had its downs. Um, so, yeah. But I am looking to coming back and doing this on the daily. So, there we go. Um, Yuzold, thank you. It's nice to see all of you too. Thank you, Rene. Uh, thank you, Veronique, as well. So, sorry, I can't literally read all of your comments. Um, Alex says, I wish a very special and beautiful uh, birthday to Her Majesty the Queen. Thank you. Uh, Rene, yes, you've seen the swan. If you don't know, this is Brenda. We called her Brenda and she's wearing a crown. Of course, um, the, the Queen uh, famously owns all of, the, um, all of the swans on the River Thames, which is why we have a, an annual swan upping where all the swans are counted. Um, Christine says, uh, Windsor, I heard she is at Wood Farm. I thought the photo came out of uh, Windsor, but it could have been that she was driving. Let me check. Do you know what? I'm going to go and check. Uh, I thought, let me just go check. Uh, this is what is so good about the internet. You can literally check anything uh, <laughs> straight away. So let's have a little peek and see. Um... Hang on. Right. So while I'm looking for this, uh, you take this time to write any questions that you'd like to put to me. Um, yes, it was Sandringham. It was Wood Farm. For some reason, I thought it was Windsor. It wasn't. It was Wood Farm. Uh, she was seen driving on the Sandringham estate and there is a more public road. Uh, don't forget Wood Farm. That's where Prince Philip had his driving accident. So... Um, so yes, there is a more public road that you can see. Uh, so there we go. We have fact checked. She was actually in Sandringham. Um, Lady Buckingham has commented on the Barbie doll. So yes, Mattel has launched um, a, a new Barbie doll and it is in the likeness of Queen Elizabeth. As soon as I knew about it, I looked to see where I could buy it. I don't know where you can buy it. I haven't seen anywhere where it's been released. So if you know where this doll can be purchased, then please let me know. Send me a link because um, <laughs> I, I want that doll. Uh, Laurie Laurie, uh, Mrs. Royal News, thank you so, so much. Um, let's have a look. Oh, Bethan ordered the Barbie doll this morning. Where from? Tell me. Uh, have I ever met the Queen personally? No, I have not, but I would absolutely love to. I looked on Amazon I looked on Amazon UK and it wasn't there. Is it on Amazon US and not on Amazon UK? Right, okay, I'm I'm looking immediately now on Amazon UK to see if it's there. I will tell you all, if I can find it, I will tell you all and I will post the link to it so we can all go and get one. <laughs> so is it known as the Queen Elizabeth Barbie? I imagine, I'm typing in Queen Elizabeth Barbie. Um, no, on the UK one, it's not there. I'm not getting it. No, on the UK one, not there. Is it just a US thing? I don't know, but I really want one. Um, yeah, I'm after this, I might have to hop onto the US one and see if I can pay postage, honestly. <laughs> oh, um, Nancy, there'll be a... If people have them, there'll be a fortune on eBay. So I wouldn't even bother looking on eBay, to be quite honest. Rene loves Brenda. Thank you so, so much. Okay, so um, it's over to you guys. I haven't got any questions planned to answer because I didn't know what you wanted to talk about. So let me know. Um, let me know. <laughs> 
<laughs> By the way, this is the time that I normally do my patrons chat. So um, we've I've foregone the patrons chat today to do this talk about Queen Elizabeth uh, and anything else that you want to talk about. But, but all the way through um, lockdown and, and everything that's happened over the past two years, I have done a weekly chat on Patreon. Uh, the link is in the description box below right now. Um, and I always do a talk, and I have done, uh, about everything that's been going on all the way through. Um, hello to Denise. Uh, Christine says she was looking at the palace shop for Jubilee souvenirs. Everything I wanted was sold out. You have to get in there really quick, which is why as soon as I heard about the Barbie doll, I was like, I need to have it straight away because if people buy them up and they get on eBay, the prices just go through the roof, honestly. I've still got the, um, the, the doll of, there were two wedding Catherine dolls. There was the engagement Catherine doll and there was the um, Kate Middleton uh, wedding doll. So I still have those and they're actually going for quite a bit of money now. Okay, John S says, how's the Harry and Meghan situation? I knew that was going to be asked. <laughs> okay, which part of it? Because it seems to be an ongoing saga. Um, so as we know, we'll talk about what Harry's been doing most recently and then we can kind of work back from there if I've not answered your question. So um, Harry is currently in the Netherlands at The Hague taking, not taking part, but he is almost, I suppose, presiding over the Invictus Games. And of course, the Invictus Games is the UK version of the Warrior Games, which of course was started in the USA. So I think Harry and his team initially got the idea from the Invictus Games from the Warrior Games. And of course, the Invictus Games was set up when Harry was a full-time working royal. It's when he was um, still under Kensington Royal and Kensington Palace. So it is very much his baby, but it was very much a royal baby, if you like. It was done, set up during his time as a royal. And of course, since leaving, since stepping back, he has retained um, his association exactly how it was before, with the Invictus Games. And of course, there over the past two years, that wasn't allowed to happen because of, you know, what was going on in the world. So this year has been very important. It's been a return to the physical form of the Invictus Games. And, you know, it does help a lot of war veterans. Now, on the way to the Invictus Games, um, Harry and Meghan paid a visit to the Queen. Now, of course, this wasn't a publicised... Um, meeting so we only got to know about it after the event harry and megan confirmed that it did happen um so they did fly into the uk there is of course an ongoing row um harry against the home office with regarding security harry thinks that he should have um the personal protection officers that other members of the royal family have however not princess eugenie not princess beatrice um so he thinks he should have that level of protection. The Home Office doesn't think that he does. So there's a bit of a row going on right now over will he get it, won't he get it? Um, and I suppose it will come eventually down to the legality of it. Um, so somebody somewhere is going to have to make a decision at some point to whether or not he definitely is going to remain not having it or he will have it when he comes to the UK. Regardless of that, regardless of what the outcome is, regardless of the rights or wrongs, he came to the UK with Meghan. They had tea with the Queen. Um, and if you believe the reports that have been coming out, one of the stipulations of the visit, because of course this would... Harry and Meghan didn't just turn up. They didn't just turn up on the Queen's doorstep. This would have been planned in advance. I don't know how far in advance, but Harry and Meghan or Harry and Meghan's team would have spoken to arrange this visit. So it was pre-arranged. So if you believe the reports coming out, then the Queen had a special stipulation, and that is that they meet first with Prince Charles. Um, so lots of sources are um, collaborate, collaborating um, that that in fact did happen, that they met with Prince Charles uh, first. I think Camilla came in partway through, and apparently this meeting lasted... I think it was 15 minutes or so because Prince Charles and Camilla had to then go on and do the Easter Monday service because the Queen couldn't attend that in person. That's normally her job. 
Princess Beatrice and Eugenie, I think, have attended, um, accompanied the Queen in previous ones, but it was full on Charles and Camilla this time. So I think there was limited time. It did only last 15 minutes. We don't know exactly what came out of that. Of course, there are ongoing tensions. Um, you know, Prince Harry is um, having a book, sort of, you know, he's working with a ghostwriter, I think, to kind of come up with um, a book of, we don't exactly know what the full contents are, uh, but there is speculation, of course, press speculation, um, that um, he's going to talk about the royal family. So we don't know what he spoke about with the Queen. We just know that he and Meghan had tea with the Queen and that there was some kind of talk, I think. Uh, well, no, Harry revealed in an interview uh, for the Invictus Games that he made the Queen laugh and that he spoke about things with the Queen that no one else does. Now, of course, we don't know what these things are. Uh, we don't even know if it's true. It's just what Harry said. Um, now, oh, and he also raised issues about the Queen's protection um, and trying to make sure that she's safe, which was quite curious because um, the government shot back straight away that the Queen is quite safe and that, you know, her safety provision is perfectly adequate and in place. However, I don't think Harry was talking about her protection in terms of her physical person. I don't think he was talking about the police protection because don't forget, Prince Harry is after getting the return of that same protection. So I don't think he's criticising her physical protection. He was definitely, I think, talking about who surrounds her, her staff, her advisers, possibly family even, I don't know. Um, you know, she, he could be talking about the likes of Angela Kelly. Of course, Angela Kelly uh, was, you know, involved during Tiara Gate during the wedding. And of course, that all came out later on. So I think he was talking about um, the advisors and the advice that she was getting um, or is is getting. And I don't think Harry, um, even today, you know, agrees with the people that that is that are surrounding Her Majesty. So we kind of have to, you know, we don't know what's come of that. Um, it wasn't a long time that Harry spent with the Queen. We saw a vehicle, there's photographs of a vehicle leaving Windsor that was believed to contain Harry and Meghan. And then they flew on uh, to the Netherlands where, of course, um, the Invictus Games continued. Meghan is now, has now flown back to the US and Harry is... Um, remaining at The Hague in the Netherlands uh, until the closing ceremony of Invictus. Uh, they did also speak about Archie and Lilibet, revealing some personal information and details. Okay, Pamela says, I didn't feel Prince Harry was comfortable or confident in his answers during his interviews with Hoda Kotba. I hope I've said that correctly. It's probably Kot. Anyway. Uh, regardless of pronunciation, um, I mean, people are going to think what they what they think, and yeah, it is what it is with regards to that. Um, Denise says now that the Steen is Queen is stepping back, and it's technically only Charles, Camilla, William, and Kate, and the Wessexes, and Princess Anne, <laughs> and Edward and Sophie. Um, who's taking up the slack? Well, that's what I've just said. Princess Anne, the Wessexes have most definitely um, stepped up. Um, been talk as well about Princess Eugenie and Beatrice. Might they finally, you know, have the potential to step up? I think they've always had the potential, but there's always been a bit of a barrier in the way. And if you believe the press, um, then potentially that barrier was Prince Charles. But I do think since um, Prince Andrew's situation, since Harry and Meghan stepping back, there has been a bit of a vacuum, a bit of a void within the royal family, and nobody wants the charities to lose out. Nobody wants these charities not to have a royal patron. So there is a little bit of slack. It has, I think, been pretty much, you know, William and Catherine have most definitely stepped up. There's also talk as well about uh, William and Catherine moving closer to Windsor, um, not, you know, to sort of be around the Queen a lot more, but also when Charles is king as well. It's going to be Charles that is going to need to have the help. So there was a few homes that have been spoken about potentially for William and Catherine, Adelaide Cottage, um, and you know a few other a few other royal 
places, royal homes, Fort Belvedere, which of course was uh, the former home of Edward and Wallace Simpson. So there's been a few places. Of course, Fort Belvedere is, actually has a lease. Um, and the, the current family that are in it have spent a lot of money on the lease, but also renovating the property. So I think there's something like 20, 25 years left on the lease. So um, to get Fort Belvedere, I think there would have to be a bit of a payment to that family to get them out of Fort Belvedere. So I don't think that's going to happen. Adelaide Cottage is a little bit more perhaps realistic, but there's also been talk about them buying their own property, which of course would then have to have all the security upgrades to make sure that it was safe. So I don't know where it's going with that. So we're gonna to have to wait and see with that one, what develops. And um, Sterling says, oh, I think we can think of many things that Harry will talk about in the book. <laughs> Mainly throwing his uh, family under the bus. Has to or no one is buying the book. Um, definitely publishers are going to want their pound of flesh. Uh, I don't think they're going to just, you know, have a book where he's talking about just his charity work. You know, there's going to have to be, from Harry, a little bit of grit. Um, so I think he will be talking about his early childhood. I think he may touch on his parents' divorce. I think he'll definitely touch on his parents' divorce. I think he'll touch on losing his mother. I think he'll touch on his times... Um, of fighting for the UK um, in Afghanistan on his tours of duty. I think he will talk about leaving um, leaving the royal family, the working royal family. Uh, he may expand up upon what he spoke about during Oprah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, they are going to want their pound of flesh. It's the same with Netflix as well, you know. They, uh, the cameras have been spotted following uh, following him around in Victor's Games, talking, of course, to the Ukrainian team. And, of course, U Ukraine is going through um, all the issues it's going through at the moment. Um, and, of course, the Netflix element of what he's doing is the personal financial money-making part for himself. So he's kind of mixing the whole charity with the personal money-making. For me, it's not a really good fit. Um, I do think there needs to be a lot more separation between um, what is charity and what is personal money making. Of course, it's all under the kind of Archwell umbrella. Of course, they, they are, of course, separate companies, but the, you know, the word Archwell is used. Archwell Audio, Archwell Productions, Archwell, the charitable, the um, non-profit foundation. So people, you know, without looking into it in a great detail, may think that something is for charity when in fact it's not, it's actually for their personal money-making ventures. So personally, I said it from the start when they first set up the website, that there needs to be a lot more, for me, separation between the two. I don't think they will do that, but for me, it should be a little bit more separate so that it's very clear what they're making money from. Um, hey, Tender King, hello. It says, hope you won't be seeing the Queen's drawing room on Netflix. <laughs> maybe, maybe the cameras went in. Who knows? <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll have to watch and see. Um, Ashley says, I think Beatrice and Eugenie would make great assets to the working uh, members of the royal family. I've said that for many, many years. The other royals can't do everything. No, they cannot. Um... Let's have a look. Sterling says, what did I think of Andrew taking most of the headlines away from his dad's Thanksgiving service? So well, don't forget, it wasn't... He didn't want that to happen at that time. Um, the timing of it, I think, was very, very much... Um, well, was it in the hands of Virginia Roberts Dufre? I don't know. I mean, she certainly... She was the one who brought it. Um, and, of course, it coincided with the time that that happened. So it wasn't Andrew... You know, he definitely didn't want that to happen at that time. So I don't, you can accuse Andrew of many things, but I don't think um, having that at that particular time was one of them. Uh, of course, he did settle out of court, as I do believe most cases of that nature do in the US. Um, it's not really necessarily a thing here in the UK, um, but of course we're dealing with US courts, and he did decide to settle. So for Prince Andrew, that matter was closed for now um, and it just so happened to be around that time that that was happening. Um, 
And yes, it was regrettable that people were talking about that rather than about Prince Philip's memorial, because, of course, his funeral happened during Covid. The Queen famously was sat by herself. Um, they couldn't meet and greet with the other members of the royal family afterwards. So it really was a chance, this memorial service, to really kind of get together as a family to pay homage to Prince Philip. And, you know, that was there in the media um, almost overshadowing things but I don't think it did in the end because um, it was it was the love of the Queen and Prince Philip that did in fact shine through. Um, ooh, hang on, I, I was about to read a comment and it's shot up. Uh, Denise said, would Harry and Meghan go ahead meeting uh, black Jamaicans through a chain link fence? I know that would not have happened. Who the hell thought that was a good idea? Great luck, William and Kate there. Of course, you're talking about the Caribbean tour that William, um, William and Catherine took part in. Let's talk about that fence for a moment. So that fence was not part of William and Catherine's, um, what they wanted there. There were protests going on. Uh, and of course, again, you know, just like Prince Andrew didn't want that to happen during that service, William and Catherine didn't want the protest to happen. Uh, it was the Jamaican authorities that put that wire fence up to stop any potential protests actually getting physically close to William and Catherine. It was a protection thing. Um, so, of course, the optics of it were really terrible because, of course, you saw the Jamaicans with their hands through the fence trying to, you know, reach William and Catherine. And then you saw William and Catherine on the other side of the fence reaching their hands. It wasn't very good optics, but it wasn't the people at the side of the fence's fault. Um, they just wanted to meet and greet William and Catherine. They were happy to be there. It wasn't William and Catherine's fault because they didn't ask for the protest to be there. They didn't ask for the fence. It was the authorities that put it up. So it was an unfortunate photo. But I think, in a way, what would have been worse? Would it have been worse if Harry and if um, William and Catherine would have just walked on by? Do you think that would have looked worse than if they'd actually gone up to the people? It did look bad. It was bad optics. Um, but I don't think it was anyone's fault. The people on the other side of the fence wanted to be there. They wanted to greet William and Catherine. They weren't protesters. They were just ordinary people that wanted to welcome warmly, that wanted to give that Jamaican hospitality that Jamaicans, uh, the, that the Jamaican people are famous for. Um, you know, they wanted to give that hospitality to William and Catherine and that fence was put up in the middle. It wasn't William and Catherine's fault. It wasn't the people's fault. But it wasn't a good look. And Christine says, I won't be buying Harry's book. Besides, the media will report uh, on the juicy tidbits. I'm, I'm sure they will. Right, I'm going to have to skip down to the bottom. Um, so let's have a look. Oh, yeah, Angela Kelly's book. So as you know, again, I was reading comment section of... Um, some article written about Angela Kelly. So Angela Kelly is the Queen's dresser and jewellery curator. And, you know, she is a close confidant of the Queen and she has written two books previously uh, with the Queen's full permission. So the Queen has allowed Angela, Angela Kelly the permission to write these two books and to share everything that was within them. She has had permission from the Queen. There was lots of people saying, you know, she should be sacked for revealing all these secrets and blah, blah, blah. No, Angela Kelly was given permission by the Queen. I have the two books and in it it says this book is with the permission of Her Majesty the Queen and all proceeds go towards the Royal Collection Trust. So that is maintaining lots of art and treasures that are held by the Queen in trust on behalf of the nation. So basically, it's like a charity. It's giving the proceeds of the book to charity. So Angela Kelly has done nothing wrong. I think Angela Kelly was, um, you know, being demonised a little bit there. And it was completely unfair because the Queen has given permission. Uh, Maggie Moo says, it was a football pitch. The fence had been up for the safety of playing football. It was up when... That's not what I heard. I heard it was put up because of protests. Uh, 
And Ashley says, I feel at least Harry should have gone to the memorial. It's just gross he didn't go. Um, I mean, he was worried about his own safety. I mean, we can't, we can't say that he wasn't worried about his safety. Um, but, you know, if he had gone to the memorial service, service, he would have had the protection vicariously of the other royals. He would also have had the protection of the general police because any royal event is policed. It is policed so, so much. There are police outside, inside, everything's been scoped. People, um, you know, are vetted, all that kind of thing. So he would have been perfectly safe at the event. And I, I do think his own team would have been able to have coped with anything else. Lauren says, I love Angela Kelly's books, me too. Uh, no, Archie and Elibert, we believe, um, have not come on the Netherlands trip. And we do believe that Meghan has now flown back. Um, mm -mm. Yeah, Sheila says, no, they're not on the trip. Um, okay, so I think we've got down to all of the latest questions. In fact, if I go up, I may have actually missed some. Let's go up. Um... Oh, Kate says, I turned in because you have the crown on. Yes, it's um, one of Queen Elizabeth's tiaras. The girls of Great Britain and Ireland. And Sterling says, what exactly is Harry worried about? The other royals don't seem to be, nor the VIPs going to these celebrations. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, you'd have to ask Harry and his team. I really don't know. And I imagine that is what the Home Office or whoever, the, the person, that, there is going to be someone that makes a decision finally whether or not he will get that protection or not. So they will be looking at what, whatever Harry is saying is the main concern. They will be looking to see, can that be um, overcome in any other way? So, you know, basically, does he need the protection or not? So that, your your question will be being looked at by those who are in the know to make that decision. Um, H.M. The King says, I think the fact that William and Catherine didn't see how bad the optics looked just shows um, how not racist they are. Um, yeah, I mean, from their point of view, they wanted to greet the people. From the people's point of view, they wanted to greet William and Catherine. Uh, it just so happened there was a big massive fence in the middle. Lady Londinium says it was great that Harry did not attend the memorial. Speaking about uh, future um, attending events, Troop in the Colour. So Troop in the Colour, I do believe at the moment, is scheduled to take place in London. So over the past two years, it's taken place at Windsor as in a much more scaled back version because of the C word that's been going on in the world. Um, but it is muted to take place or planned to take place in London. With the Queen's mobility, it may have to be done a little bit differently. <clears throat> I'm still not completely ruling out that it couldn't be changed back to Windsor. But if it does go ahead in London, I believe that there could be a few changes, especially with the Queen uh, you know, mounting up on the little dais that she sits on to watch the troop in the colour. Um, I had a little think about it and I thought, how would I do it if I was planning it? And I think the most simple answer, my mind went straight back to Queen Victoria during her Jubilee celebrations um, when she just stayed in her carriage. She was kind of paraded round and she stayed in her carriage and I think she watched a procession go by. So I'm thinking that they would remove the dais, they would still have a canopy and I think the carriage could potentially park up under the can of park up. Um, <laughs> what does a carriage do? Does it park up or does it hitch up? I don't know. Anyway, the carriage will come stationary, I think, under the dais um, and will be stationary whilst the procession, um, whilst the troop in the colour goes ahead and, it will, you know, it'll go round and she'll be able to see um, all the, all what's going on as she usually does. Um, Perhaps I'm thinking that um, Prince Charles could be sat next to her, 
uh, Camilla, William and Catherine could be in another one. So I'm thinking it could be done from the carriages, uh, which of course would um, negate the fact for the cameras being able to see the Queen getting up and down the dais. Of course it could, it could be that the cameras are just told to turn away and she mounts and, and dismounts, but it would be in front of all the spectators, which might be a problem for the Queen. I think she doesn't want to be seen in a wheelchair. She still is kind of, you know, harking back to those pictures taken of her sister, Princess Margaret, uh, for the Queen Mother's birthday when Margaret was wheeled out um, by backstairs Billy, one of her advisors, and she didn't look very well. And I think the Queen doesn't want to recreate that look for herself. Uh, Mijan Swap says getting into the carriage might be a problem. Um, it might be a problem, but she will have help to do it. There could be mounting steps. I mean, you know, you can even be hoisted. I mean, I know it's a little bit undignified for Her Majesty, but, you know, you can actually hoist into things. And that could be done behind closed doors or behind closed gates, so to speak, so that nobody could see. So she could stay in the carriage the whole time and then go back um, and then be you know, dismount the carriage in whatever way she got up. H.A. Um, Bracken says, I've seen talk that the monarchy will end before William becomes king. Do I agree? No, um, I think in the UK, um, the public appetite for monarchy is still really, really strong in, you know, pretty much every single poll that takes place. Uh, I mean, th there are dips, there are variations in polls, um, and over times, t you know, for example, back in the early 90s, um, the royal family's popularity dipped, but there was still strong support for it, um, and it's been high for a very, very long time, actually, and I think, you know, over the past couple of years, it may have suffered a bit of a dip, I think respect for the Queen is still really, really high, um, and I think the monarchy will always weather the storms, Basically, the um, British people are not anti-monarchy. There are a few that are more Republican-minded uh, and anti-monarchy, but they are not the majority. Um, H.N. the King says, I reckon she could manage getting from the carriage to, uh, to the seat on a ramp. Potentially. Uh, she could even be wheelchaired up if the cameras were told not to... Not to cast their lenses onto her. We're going to have to wait and see, basically. But the one that I, my mind goes back to is, is Queen Victoria's model. And I think the Queen potentially could be thinking along the same lines. Laurie Laurie says, it was great to see Prince George and Princess Charlotte recently so grown up. Where is Prince Louis? Um, I'm not sure where Louis is, but George, I mean, he looks exactly like Prince William at that age, absolutely. And Charlotte, I can still see the Queen, but I can also see Diana. I've always been able to see the look of Princess Diana in Charlotte. Um, Lisa says, all the talk about Harry and Meghan being booed if they came back in June. Let's see if people really would, or if they're all talk and no action. In the UK, we have pantomime booze. Let me just sip my tea for a moment. It's, um, it's gingerbread tea and I love it. So, um, pantomime booing is like where you have a pantomime baddie. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I think Harry and Meghan are being billed as this sort of pantomime bad guy. And, you know, there has been talk that if they go onto the balcony, and by the way, they are entitled to be on the balcony at Trooping the Colour. Um, it is a family event, really. It's not actually an official royal event. It's, 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 a, it's a family birthday that is celebrated and shared with the public. So, at the end, when the fly past happens, all of the extended family that, that are available all go out onto the balcony, including, you know, some of the distant royals. So, Harry and Meghan are perfectly entitled to, to go to that. Um, but the attention that they will bring could cause the British public, and of course there, there will be a lot of people down down there at Buckingham Palace, um, at the bottom of the mile by the Queen Victoria Memorial Fountain, and they could potentially boot. Um, I don't know if they will, I don't know if they won't, but they could potentially. And I think we would definitely know um, who the boo was for if it happened, because the Queen normally comes out first, 
So I'm imagining she would get all cheers. And then if people are going to go down the route of booing, when Harry and Meghan emerge, that is when the boo would likely happen, if indeed it was going to. So I'm not going to say that it's definitely going to happen. I'm not going to say it won't happen. We don't even know if Harry and Meghan are going to attend anyway. We do think they have been invited, however. Uh, so, so yeah, basically, we don't know. Uh, but I think we'll know about it if it happens. Lauren says she may travel by car for comfort, but they have said she may not be at, a, at every event. Yeah, they basically said, turned around and said, the Queen's health, uh, her attendance at events will depend on the day. Uh, basically, the Queen turning up to any in-person event will be a bonus, um, not a given. And she will always be accompanied by another royal. So there you go. <laughs> and the King says, he's behind you. Exactly, pantomime booing. Um, NR says, I second what Lauren said. The monarchy is quite stable now. However, I do see more Commonwealth countries wanting to remove the Queen as head of state. Um, and that is entirely up to them. If you if you think, really, the Queen um, and certainly the British government have not tried to stop um, any country from, you know, from choosing their own uh, their own fate in terms of the, the Commonwealth countries um, and overseas um territories um but we all share the queen you know the queen is not just the queen of the uk and the queen of britain she's also the queen of australia the queen of canada she's the queen of all the other um countries and realms that she is queen of and you know each one is equal she's not more of a queen to any other country than the other she is the queen um so it's entirely up to them um, Sandeep, hello, says we would like to see more of you. Uh, why so few live chats? Well, I, I did talk at the start of this chat about why so few live chats. Um, basically, I've been really busy. Um, Sharona says, I hope Harry and Meghan do go on the balcony. If they do, I hope they bring Archie out. Who knows? I mean, you know, at some point, most of the royal children um, and descendants have had some kind of balcony debut. Uh, Christine, I don't think I'm going to any Jubilee events. It's always the case that when you go to something like this, the atmosphere of being there is the experience, but you don't actually get to see a lot because with something like Trooping in the Colour, you're stuck in one place. You're either at the Mall or you're either at Trooping in the Colour. You can't really move move much. Um, so, And you may get obscured. obscured obscured views you may only just see the tops of people driving by on the carriages you actually get a much better view <laughs> that at home watching the tv because you get to see everything so it depends whether or not you want the experience of actually being there um also it's usually very very hot um you can't really move that's the whole toilet situation so you know it's up to you whether you want to go and have the experience of being there or you want to actually see everything Um, Lisa says, if Harry and Meghan do attend, I'm curious to see if people will actually take their dislike public and not just display it online. People always say what they do, but don't actually actually do it. Yeah, I agree. You know, there are a lot of, a lot of keyboard warriors who, who, you know, type the talk, but would they do the action? I understand entirely what you're saying. Um, Sandeep says, thanks for personally uh, replying. A fan flap for you. Thank you. I don't have them on me, but I will give you a fan flap. Um, oh, thank you so, so much. I miss you all too. Um, okay. Um, Ottoman Lad says, uh, I wish I could be in the UK to attend the Jubilee events right now. Can we have one in our country? You can try and organise one yourself. You could have a house, you could all have house parties. That would be amazing. Lauren misses the fan flaps. Right, now I'm trying to think, has, is there anything really important that's been happening over the last so many months that you want to talk about that we haven't spoken about today? Do let me know. Um, so I'm going to take a little drink of my drink and... And I'm waiting for a few questions to come in. 
Um, June says, if I were at the Queen's birthday jubilee, I would not be with the Sussexes. I would be there for the Queen, not give attention to them. And, you know, it is all about the Queen. I think we do need to remember that it is the Queen's, um, you know, official birthday celebrations. Um, so it should be all about the Queen, shouldn't it? Okay, so I'm going to leave this chat here now. I think we've had a bit of a catch up. I will be returning to Royal Reviewer fully um, in one capacity or another. I just have about four, five weeks until we are settled in our new home. Uh, for, those, for those of you who missed the start, we have been renovating a home. It's been take, it's taken pretty much the best part of, of a year from start to finish to get it all done. It's been very stressful and once I have the time to dedicate back to doing all these things, I will be doing more videos. I will uh, be, be making more periodic um, royal videos up to that point. So if you haven't already, please hit subscribe, do share this video and I will see you next time. Mwah to you all 